Hello and welcome. Today I would like to make another short video, which is not necessarily retro, but is probably useful for some of you. If you saw my last video about GeForce GTX 770 repair, you will remember that I bought a new PSU Extra to be able to test the graphics card. I didn't want to spend too much money and found this Mars Gaming PSU for only 34 euro, including shipment. I searched online for some reviews, but I didn't find anything, so I decided to make a video and tell what I think about it. This video is by the way not sponsored, so it's really just an honest review. The model number is MPB550 and it advertises with 80 plus bronze label and over 90% efficiency. It also mentions active PSC, which is important to have in the EU and many cheap PSUs do not have any PSC at all, so it is actually not allowed to use them here. In the box there is nothing special, a power cable and a bag with screws. The PSU feels super light, but the times where the weight of a PSU was a sign of quality are passed away, so it is nothing negative. In my opinion, even better for the overall less weight of a PC if you need to carry it. So, the power supply promises 550 watts overall power. Most of the power is on the plus 12 volts rail with up to 480 watts. This is usual for the modern PSUs as well as the absence of minus 5 volt rail, which makes this PSU less suitable for the retro machines. Furthermore, it has only 18 amps on plus 5 volts, so 90 watts, which is not much at all, but should be still enough for Pentium, 486 and earlier machines. The cables are not modular, which is absolutely okay for that price. Let's see which connectors the PSU provides. First of all, there is the usual 24-pin ATX mainboard power plug. The cable has a sleeve, that is nice. Next is the 4 plus 4 12 volt CPU power plug, which is modular and should also fit for the older boards, which need only the 4-pin plug. Then we have two strands where each one has two SATA power connectors and one Molex. Pay attention that there is no smaller floppy power connector attached, so if you have something what needs that plug, like some old GPUs or disk drives, you would need to use a Molex adapter. Well, and last but not least, the cable, which was the reason for me to buy a new KSU, this PCI Express 6 plus 2 power cable. If you saw my last video, you will remember that I needed this cable to test the graphics card which I repaired. This cable is also dividable and can be used for 6-pin connectors. Unfortunately, I don't have too much of special equipment to test the PSU, but I have this small PSU tester where you can connect all the cables into and see if all the signals and voltages are OK. If something is wrong, this device makes some acoustic and visual alarm to show what exactly is wrong. And the PCU is on. The test device makes two beeps which indicates that all values are in limits. First positive note is that the power supply is absolutely silent, at least for now, with just a little load. Ok, let's see the values. The minus 12 volt rail is at 11.5. I would say that everything within 5% of deviation is ok. So you see 12 volt is perfectly on point. Standby voltage is also ok. 3.3 volt is also ok. And second 12 volt rail is fine. And 5 volts look also ok. That is very good so far. Let's make the second test, which is about safety. A good power supply should detect short circuit on any rail and shut down as soon as possible. Otherwise, the cables will be exposed to unlimited current, overheat and start burning in a couple of seconds. I think I don't need to explain how dangerous it is. Please don't try such things at home without having a fire extinguisher nearby. I always have one in my workshop at hand. The device can catch fire quicker than you think. Let's try to short the 5 volt rail to the ground first. Wow, as you see, this power supply didn't turn off. Uh, that's clearly a thick minus point for this PSU. And even after just 3 seconds, I already can feel that the cables got quite hot. This is definitely a security issue. Let's try the same for the 12V rail. 
This time it went a lot better. The power supply turned off in a second. This is how it meant to be. And after turning the PCU off and on again, it still does work. So it's not only detected the short circuit, it made a control shut down to avoid further damage or fire. Let me check 5 volts rail once again. Nope, just the same. There is no protection on the 5 volt rail. That's unfortunate. Okay, that was a basic test. The PSU seems to work. It is silent so far and it has a short circuit detection only on 12 volts rail. But how does it behave in a real use case? If you remember, I bought this PSU actually only to be able to test this GTX 770, which I repaired in my last video. So it gave me a good setup for some real-life tests. The main board runs with an Athlon 64X to 4400+, plus, which is not the most power-efficient system, and the graphics card uses external PCI Express power cables to get its 12 volts. I ran the tests for more than 12 hours and used such a power consumption measurement device to see how much load was on the PSU. When idling, the whole system used just slightly more than 60 watts. I tried my best to get as much load on the system as I could, but the maximum constant power draw was at 265 watts. The good thing is that the system remained absolutely stable. In 12 hours of testing, I didn't get one slight hiccup and the PCU delivered the power reliably. The best news is that the PCU remained absolutely silent and cool even at 265 watts. That is a sign that there were still plenty of power reserves left. So, what can I say about this power supply? On the good side, it is very silent and cool. It is surprisingly well made. It provides PCI Express 6 plus 2 power rail for the GPU. It has SATA and Molex connectors, it has short circuit detection on 12 volts rail. Unfortunately, I couldn't generate more load, but at least at 50% it was absolutely reliable. And with only 34 euros shipped, it is extremely cheap. On the bad side, there is no short circuit detection on 5 volts rail, which is dangerous. It has only one PCI Express 6 plus 2 power connector for the GPU. I had to use a Molex adapter to get the second 6-pin cable which was needed for the GTX 770. This can be a problem for some graphics cards. And not the best choice for the retro build since it has not enough power on the 5V rail and it also doesn't provide minus 5 volts. Well, the manufacturer promises 80 plus bronze efficiency on one corner of the package and over 90% efficiency in the other. But unfortunately, I don't have proper tools to confirm or disprove that. However, at least in my case, the PSU did a good job. Very silent and cool and so, in my opinion, quite sufficient. The fact that it doesn't have any short circuit detection on the 5V rail scares me honestly. However, you will be surprised how many even expensive PCUs from well-known manufacturers also don't have such a protection on 5V a day. In my opinion, it is just irresponsible and should be forbidden. But this trend unfortunately seems to be more common than many people think. So, would I suggest this PCU? I tend to say yes. It is less suitable for a retro PC, but for a modern one it has actually a great value, especially due to the fact that the price for a PCU which is twice or even three times as high as for this one is not a guarantee for an existing short circuit protection on the 5V rail. I didn't find anything else what is really wrong about it, but still, please remember that this was just a basic test, since I just don't have any equipment to make some advanced tests. And again, this review was not sponsored by anyone, it was just my honest opinion. And this is it for today. I know that this video was again quite away from the usual topics I cover, but I promise next time it will be all about retro hardware again. And so far, thank you and goodbye.